please warmly welcome to the stage CEO and founder of Acronis, Sergei Belosov. <clears throat> oh, very glad to be here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's the first time we're giving hybrid events. There are some people here looking at me from this wonderful studio, and there are some people online. And so I will be talking to the audience here, but it's really to everybody who's listening. So this is our headquarter in Singapore, but as we know today, the world is rapidly becoming digital. You know, we used to see pictures like this. Believe it or not, um, in the future, many of our children uh, will see only digital pictures like this. And we are talking to you from the wonderful Schaffhausen, which in real life looks like this, but our headquarter now looks digital for most of people. And even many of our employees, executives, were not really able to come here, even though they were planning to just about a week ago. And so digital is what is becoming very solid and unmovable, and physical, which seemed to be so solid, becomes very much uh, virtual and unreal and changing all the time. And so now um, about Acronis, uh, we, are, um, uh, we are here in 2020. We are growing our new offering, CyberCloud, uh, very, very rapidly. We uh, are present in all, all, almost every Fortune 1000 company. Uh, many times when I speak, I'm asked um, if we are present. We are present in all those companies, mostly in, on the endpoints, on the edge deployments in remote offices in factories, in specialized locations. We only do business with partners. Over the years, 50,000 partners. We sell to everybody. We do not distinguish where the bits, bytes, applications and systems and workloads, what we call all of that combined, come from. And so we also work with 5.5 million consumers. We're not a small company. We're not a huge company yet. We're about 1.5 thousand people. We're based in 30 over locations. For this event, I stopped counting locations because number of locations is growing very fast, but all these locations are really virtual, so a lot of people work from home. We are um, doing business in 150 plus countries, which is evident from just registrations to this event. 135 countries were identified really clearly, and we are supporting 30 languages. Of course, the main language is English, which is a language of this event, but we actually simultaneously support and we are committed to deliver support in more languages in the future. We believe IT is becoming basic need, and as IT is a basic need, you need to speak the language of the user. This event has been challenging for us in many respects, and so we have a lot of very valuable VIP visitors, 9,000 people registered, 135 countries. First of all, before I start, I wanted to thank our sponsors, especially the, our top sponsors. We have several more top sponsors, premium sponsors this year, GoDaddy, Ingram Cloud, Scale Computing, Pax8, Climb, um, Channel Solutions, Intel, and ShareWeb. Uh, thank you very much. We hope to do a good job for you and deliver value with this event. And again, this year is very, very challenging for us. So one side, we have nine times more people registered. You know, when you grow in a company like Acronis, you're still mostly based on physical species, which are called people. It's very difficult to multiply people nine times. We have 135 countries versus 57 last year. Uh, we have 128 speakers versus 74 last year. And we have 93 sessions versus 46 year, last year. So, you know, number of speakers, number of sessions, number of countries have grown in a reasonable way, but number of people who attend is really growing too much. And of course, we have uh, more sponsors as well. I also want to say thank you to our uh, CyberFit Partner Awards winners. We are um, very proud to have them as our partners. You know, most of our great partners are growing at over 150% per year. For us, the partners who are growing 50% are satisfactory, 75% are good, more than 150% are great. And most of these guys are growing as much as great. Of course, we also uh, recognize that leaders are different between different countries, and this is our le regional leaders. We continue to believe that the right strategy for us is to be global local. We're a global company with very strong local presence. Protection is something which has to be at your home. So what, this event, uh, what is in this event for you? So it is about future of cyber protection, and we believe this is the main audiences. One of the challenges of 
virtual event is that you have very, very broad audiences. And so we have service providers, which is our main audience. And for service providers, we believe cyber protection is an amazing way to continue the entrepreneur story and build bigger businesses with more value. Cloud distributors and aggregators, most important thing about cyber protection is that you can get much better margins than with anything else you sell today, and that you can sign a lot of new partner service providers, which is the future. ISV and developers uh, can get the access to rich ecosystem and to the channel of cloud distributors, cloud aggregators, and service providers. Software um, uh, resellers and classic distributors, we see, especially this year, that the classic business, the perpetual software business, is really slowly and rapidly growing away dependent on the segment. The future is service providers. Service providers is the way to go. And so what we are committed to do is to help every of our service provider partners to convert to, to sorry, every of our classic partners to convert to be service provider. This is super important if you want to sustain your business, if you want to stay in business in the next five years, especially. And then, of course, we have our long-term friends and supporters, IT professionals and business owners, and we really want to convince you guys that cyber protection, not data protection, which, which is what we've done in the past, seven years ago, but cyber protection is the way to go, is the only way for you to make your IT work, and in addition to that, the service providers is the best way to run your IT operation. Relying only on internal IT in many cases will not scale. Perhaps you can keep internal IT for your core data center operations and core applications, but supporting variety of workloads on the edge and endpoint, you need service providers. That's just a better way to go. So this is a sort of a world of the present, right? So there is a guy somewhere in the server room who maintains the server infrastructure, and a bunch of guys in other places. And the reality is that just before the pandemia, if IT doesn't work, we get frustrated, but we can continue to actually work. With um, pandemia, we know without IT, we cannot go on. And so we believe digital workloads require protection. And there is this five challenges, complexity. There is too many workloads in too many locations, especially with remote workplaces. We're talking about billions of locations for devices. And we're talking about tens of billions of devices. We believe today at least five billion deserve proper protection. Uh, high cost, if you pay per device or per gigabyte, and you pay legacy prices, which are probably five to 10 times higher than the proper prices, you simply will not be able to afford to protect all of them or to protect all of them in full. Security is just something which is required for every device, including your TV, including your refrigerator, including whatever you have in the office, and something which happens. Cybercrime is industrialized and it become really cyber. You know, global economy is $80 trillion. Crime industry is four to eight trillion dollars, five to 10% of global economy. Only 10% of, of, of crime, criminal industry, is today cybercrime. Just 400 billion to 800 billion dollars, a lot. But the point is, it can still grow much more. Because as, as uh, the criminals realize that cyber is the way for them to sustain their criminal enterprises, they will actually move cyber, and so we're talking about potential of 5x growth in a cyber crime industry and as such, huge 10 times, 20 times, 30 times growth potential in attacks. Privacy, I think this is a tremendously misunderstood and underestimated issue. Nothing in the world today is private. Everybody's looking at your information. Everybody's trying to leverage your information to manipulate your behavior in a variety of ways. And then finally, again, you cannot live without IT. So not only all of these are challenges to protect it, you just have to protect it. Because without IT, this conference will not be possible. And so we believe the only way to protect your IT is with integrated and autonomous cyber protection. And this is our mission to protect all data applications and systems. Whether we do it ourselves or show example to the industry, believe it or not, in five years, everybody will talk about cyber protection not cybersecurity. Everybody will talk about cyber protection, not data protection. Cyber protection is the only way to go, and the difference is that it's not just about safety and it's not just about security. It is about safety, nothing gets lost. It's about accessibility, everything's accessible at all times and, and works at all times for your benefit. It's all about privacy, where you can control what is access and when. It's about authenticity, making sure that what you see is real. You know, in the physical world, you can touch things. You know, when you're 
child, you don't know what is and how, and you learn over time, but it doesn't change that much. In the digital world, everything you see can actually be modified, and with the achievements of AI, can be modified in real time. How do you know that the documents were not modified? How do you know that the internet has not been modified just for your benefit? And then finally, security, protection, goal best agents, all of this has to come together. And with pandemia, we especially learn that protection is not just about detection and response. Protection with biological threats is prevention, detection, response, recovery, and forensic. You know, very simple things, prevention. Most of you here are wearing masks. I'm not wearing masks on stage. And, but otherwise, these five simple things there um, are enough to decrease the rate of sick people and dead people by the factor of one or several magnitudes, especially with social distancing. Testing is very important. Even today, tests are not really fully available here in Singapore. Sorry, here in Switzerland. In Singapore, you can test yourself in several hours. You can get results the same day. You can take multiple tests. Here, it takes 48 hours and sometimes 72 hours. It makes no sense. I get sick. Well, I feel maybe I'm sick. Can I test? Well, I can test, but I'll get the result in 72 hours. Makes no sense. It needs to be much faster. Then, of course, um, um, of course response. And response is a protocol of how people are being cured. And in countries where the protocol is correct, where people use the right cure, in fact, the death ratio is very small. In my country, in Singapore, uh, we have 28 people dying out of 60,000 people sick. You know, that's a ratio which is probably the best in the world. And that is because the protocol which is used for response and for recovery, which is super important, is the correct one. In Singapore, people are recovering only inside uh, special facilities. And finally, forensic is super important as well. Without forensic, you cannot really do anything of this. And again, if you do a good job with this simple sense, prevention, detection, response, recovery, and forensic all together, that is when you get protected against the viruses. Any viruses, you know, in fact, being sick with anything is not good. Being sick with flu is not good. You can actually die from flu as well. And so the same comes with digital threats, and with cyber protection, we just need to provide it to you in an integrated fashion. And so on that point, I just want to stop on the fact that backup, in my opinion, is dead. Just wanted to show you this short video. Come with the mic. Be okay. Well, no, probably not now. The point here is backup is dead, but at the same time, long live backup. Backup needs to be part of cyber protection. And the first thing about Acronis Cyber Protection and Acronis Cyber Protect, it is a better backup. What one thing you will learn from this speech today is we are going to discontinue backup as a separate product. What we realized is just not enough to do backup. Backup needs to be proactive. It needs to include vulnerability assessment, patch and configuration management. It needs to deal with security and needs to work against security. It needs to be active. Why to wait for something to fail, to find out and then to restore? Then it needs to be not just backup. Backup by itself is no longer possible. You need to include instant automatic recovery. And disaster recovery is really a feature of backup. It's not a separate product or separate category. It has to be as easy to do disaster recovery as to do backup. Waiting several minutes, several hours, especially several days for your IT to go back up is not right. And it needs to integrate with the rest of your tools, because if it's not integrated, then in that case, you will have challenges to manage it. And so again, it needs to deal with productivity and efficiency, because you're talking about very large number of workloads. Very large number of workloads, unless you can be efficient, you will not be able to afford or will not be able to configure, it because it's too complex. And so um, that is something we believe is very important for us, and we believe there is a huge opportunity for us to still continue to improve backup with cyber protection. It is now a feature of cyber protection. Backup is a feature of cyber protection. Disaster recovery is a feature of backup. And this is our investments. Again, I, I don't want you to believe after my speech that we are discontinuing our investment in making sure that your data is safe and accessible, your workload is safe and accessible. 
And so we'll support containers, cloud applications. We'll work on data management. Data management is already part of Acronis. We already have search across much of the data. We will enable full search in all of the archives in, in the next uh, three to six months. And, and then, of course, uh, backup needs to be more than just backup. We believe archiving is part of backup. You cannot do backup without thinking what you do with all backups, with all data, because all data is both an asset and a liability. And disaster recovery, it's also a part of the standard data. And fi fi finally, it is not about just some workloads. You have to be able to protect all workloads. And our commitment is to grow from 26 workload types supported today to about 100 in 2022. And so with that, uh, we are proud to introduce the full product, Acronis CyberProtect, which is only product available today on the market. And that's how it is super innovative way to do protection. It's only product which offers all in one protection in a single product. So there is five challenges of protection, complexity, cost, security, privacy, and the fact that it has to work at all times, a basic human need. Five vectors of protection, which is um, really safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security. Five stages of protection, prevention, detection, response, recovery, and forensic. And doing it in a single product enable these five benefits, which are really requirements, making it easy to use, low cost, making it very, very secure at all times, keeping control in the hands of users, especially with protection. Partners and customers want to keep their control and making it work at all times. Only when you have an integrated product, only when you have a one product with one agent, single agent, single binary, not multiple binaries. One policy which you set up uh, for protection, one user interface, one license, and, and it comes from one vendor, only then you can have a full protection from your workloads. Only then it could be really easy for especially smaller environment and smaller deployment but also really a large deployment at scale to be protected. And so with that, we really achieved something which I have never had in my career, where we're really a company with a single product. So single product for customers, a chronic cyber protect, making protection available for on-premise and, 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 and cloud service providers. And so it's available in both modes. Our commitment is to all of our partners. Acronis Cyber Cloud, which is our way to engage with partners and customers. Today, it is used by cloud distributors, cloud aggregators, and service providers. In the very near future, it is going to be available for classic distributor and classic partners as well. And it will allow to manage and automate classic licenses along the way with the cloud licenses. So you can actually have unified view of your customers if you do both classic and cloud. This is all based on Acronis Cyber Platform, which is just the way which enables service providers and Acronis other partners and developers to extend cyber protection for customers or cyber cloud for our channel. Cyber infrastructure, which is our proprietary protection built infrastructure, which makes all of these three things very, very efficient. And I'll talk about this later and the number of services which we provide to make it work. Ultimately, it's all about one thing, about Acronis Cyber Protect. So this is a scary screen. Um, this is a club ransomware. You hope that you haven't seen the screen before. Any of you have seen the screen on any of your computers? Okay, well, you know, you can see it at any point. This is nicer screen, so they, they, this ransomware vendors, they evolve, so they actually hire designers now. You know, that, that is not built by an engineer, so some designer actually designed it, so it's easier to read, and your network has been hacked. You know, uh, remember uh, Rene in his speech spoke about the fact that you have to have positive reinforcement. So I think the ransomware people also realize that they should not scare people too much. Because really, if they have been nice and polite, and perhaps they can get more. And the point is that this is something which happens to everybody. So Software AG was hacked with CLOP just, just recently in October this month, right? Would, would you imagine Software AG is a technology company? I'm pretty sure they have very sophisticated C CISO. This is San Rafael Hospital in currently was hacked in May 2020, right? With, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with what? With, well, some data stealing attack. CMA G CGM in France, uh, this uh, shipping giant was uh, uh, hacked with Ragnar Locker ransomware. Again, it's happened just in September. AGG in the United States, 
um, um, had a problem with 22 ransomware groups at the same time. And Argentina border control, you know, there's not so many um, columns here, but I can continue uh, forever, was just having a problem with network ransomware in September 2020. So one thing you should ask yourself, uh, why did they have it? Did they not have security? I mean, all of those are large companies. Uh, did they not have chief security officers? And the fact is that they did, and they had chief security officers. Nevertheless, they had these problems. If they, all of them were to use Acronis, they wouldn't have any problem at all. So this is the challenges which um, are not the challenges for customers, but the challenges for partners. And the challenges are very, very simple. The threats are just happening too often, and the surface of attacks is too large. And so security right now for service providers is no longer an option. Many of our partners today, we have 8,000 service providers as active partners, which are doing significant amount of business with us. Many of them are sort of realizing that security is not just an add-on feature. Attacks happen every day. You have to have it. And when you cannot stop the attack, it's you, service provider, who is responsible. Security is a very complex topic. Security, just like curing COVID, is not just about having some magic cure, some special vaccine or some special antiviral drug. It is about following complex protocols. So you have to really train your IT professionals, your technicians, and many of MSPs have really very simple technicians to be able to manage security. The attack surface is growing very, very rapidly. And the problem with that is that you can't really sort of protect one portion of the surface. You have to protect the whole surface because if there is a hole in the surface anywhere, just like with, um, with a hole in the plane, that's not gonna be very nice. So the hole cannot happen anywhere. For example, Garmin, who is our neighbor here in Schaffhausen, they were hacked in one or several workstations. I think, I believe they have 14,000 employees or something like that. Just one hole was enough for them to be hacked. And you know, friends, I'm not going to go into details, but um, uh, that is just reality. Inside the threat, that's a major, major threat. If you think about it, most of attacks of the present and a lot of attacks, most vast majority of attacks in the future happen because of the insiders. The, the weakest link in any infrastructure is not really security tools. It's really humans. It's really your employees. And that is especially a major problem for service providers themselves because their employees may be a source of the attack on their customers. People have this wonderful feature given to them by God, which is called free choice. So today they may be a good guys, tomorrow they may become a bad guys. And so they can just change. And then threat automation, that's another problem. Threats become very, very inexpensive. Organizing sophisticated, socially engineered phishing data uh, theft or ransomware attack used to require a significant number of people. Today, it's an industry which is highly specialized. You can buy components from multiple places. You can get automatic AI engine, and it will configure the attack, and it will engineer the attack, even though you attack a small business. Attacking people for even several thousand dollar benefit, it's not so bad anymore. So when we started doing security, and that was seven years ago, about Seven years ago, I became CEO of Acroni, seven and a half. About maybe six years ago, I realized that we need to build cyber protection. And from that point we started, it took us much longer to actually build the final product. We made an uh, ongoing research of security industry. This is our internal picture, which is initially started from a 10-page PowerPoint, which ended up then 250-page PowerPoint with a description of different parts of the industry. And this is just parts of different security solutions which you can actually install in order to feel protect large enterprise. This is research by ECG that 78% of organizations use more than 50 different cybersecurity tools. Okay, and 37% use more than 100 cybersecurity tools. Well, okay, you, you might be actually running a small MSP and you might think, well, these guys are crazy, right? I mean, this is a messy large businesses. They don't know how to run the infrastructure. They have too much money. Well, unfortunately, that's not really true. The reality is that if you want to protect your customers, you might as well need to use as many tools. Is it really even possible? Even today, it is difficult. Even today, every MSP, in order to provide protection, use some kind of antivirus plus plus. And it's typically not one because there is different for different workloads, different for different purposes, different for servers, different for clients. Then it has to use some kind of network security, some kind of firewall plus plus. Again, it's usually multiple. 
right? And it's managed in a separate way, and one way is not connected to another. It uses some kind of backup and disaster recovery and some form of archiving for different things. And, and then it requires different management. A lot of the management is focused on security. And so I would think average MSP, even though it is small, would run probably more than a dozen different tools for security and protection. And there is other tools which are needed in some workloads, such as encryption, forensics, access management. And so it's really a messy solution. And as you've heard from Rene, at the end of the day, the main problem with it, it's not that it is complex and it's not that it is expensive. It is simply that it doesn't work because it's difficult to configure. And unique thing about Acronis is really due to integration, we provide all of this together. Not only just because of the integration, we also can afford to build number of unique features. So this is just some example of unique features which you only get with Acronis. So first of all, automatic instant recovery. Very important, do you have it in other tools against ransomware? Well, yes, you do, but for a very small amount of data, 10 megabytes for some, 100 megabytes for some other, if you don't catch the ransomware, which could be very sophisticated, before it encrypted 100 megabytes, 100 megabytes is nothing. I started my uh, way in IT industry in 1992. I, I still remember installing 20 megabytes hard disks. In my computer right now, I have eight terabytes. What is 100 megabytes on my hard disk? It's nothing. This presentation is 110 megabytes. It's also version 78. My team actually ran an ongoing test, what's going to be larger, the version of the PowerPoint or the number of megabytes in it. But in any case, we have backup. So we have automatic recovery no matter how much data was actually encrypted. And it is automatic and it's seamless. It took Garmin 10 days to go back to normal. 10 days, problem. 10 minutes, okay, unpleasant, but it's kind of okay. Then we have forensic data and backup. Nobody else allows you to store forensic data and backup. Without forensic data, you would never know for sure what happened. Real bad guys, and by now it's an industry with four to eight trillion dollars of global revenue in criminal and 400 billion to 800 billion in cyber revenue. This is an industry with very sophisticated people. They know how to hide their tracks. And so unless you store the information, not just the data from your computer, but information from memory of your computer and everything else, you would not know what happened, and as such, it would happen again. It will just wait a little bit. And then application protection, another thing which is super important. Really, the protection goes down to the application level. You cannot, as you heard from Rene, you cannot really disallow everything to work on your computer. And things do not happen on system level anymore. You have to think about what happens in the application. We already today support many applications, specifically we support many collaboration applications uniquely, Zoom and WebEx and Teams. And believe it or not, every um, collaboration application is not designed for protection, it's designed for collaboration. As such, it is unprotected. And then, of course, our protection is many, many layers. So we would have successfully prevented um, a wasted locker attack on many, many layers. This is just, um, uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, an, an example of how many layers. So anti-malware engine, which we have built and is part of CyberProtect, would have stopped it. Even in case it would have passed, it would have been stopped on AI-based uh, 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 AI static analyzer. Behavior engine, rollback engine, will also allow to stop it. In case it would have actually done any damage, to some unpatched or unprotected or misconfigured workload, you would still be able to restore automatically from protected backup, um, and the backup wouldn't have been broken. So again, our neighbor, if they were to use Acronis, they wouldn't have had the problem. Hard to believe, but it is true, with, with, uh, you know, with disruptive innovations like Acronis CyberProtect, you get amazing results by just doing things together. This is multiple five different ransomwares which happened recently. All of them are less than um, uh, several, well, less than one year old. I mean, uh, kind of, all of them are less than one year old. Acronis is the only vendor. I mean, these are big vendors. Big Defender, CrowdStrike, Kaspersky, Microsoft, Sentinel Wall, Symantec, TrendMicro, WebRoot. All of them would have missed one ransomware. And it's enough for you to miss just one ransomware to have a problem because you're constantly attempting to be penetrated by all of them. Because, you know, you would think, okay, CLOP, there must be some people who penetrate me. These are CLOP people. No, CLOP is just a tool. 
There are so many different groups which take this tool and which use it against many, many customers. So you have to be protected against all of them. And we are the only one who do it. And that is because, again, we have multiple layers of security. We have signature-based detection, which is a, a definitely necessary, definitely the fastest way to detect things which we were able to put in, and definitely something which is useful because just like with, with new tools, people will try old tools as well. So you have to have it. You cannot not have it. Then we have very, very strong static behavioral analysis, which is actually built by us, and it catches a lot of things uniquely. We have very strong real-time threat detection. You will see it in a candid demo, I'm pretty sure. And dynamic uh, behavioral analysis and prevention is also part of it. This is the core of our offer. Long term, we believe vast majority of threats have to be called automatically by our AI engine. And we work very actively with the community. We have hired experts from top security companies, and we engage with top security alliances, and we actively share information. And we have a lot of unique information which nobody else has in this industry. And because of that, even though our solution, pure security part of our um, cyber protection solution, is only just um, uh, four months old, we actually shipped it in May, we are already uh, actually part of uh, top tests and top uh, um, security alliances, and we got top certifications. Our goal is to be in top three in every of those tests. You know, we have many newcomers to the security industry, which are sort of, um, um, you know, deny the importance of this test. Like, I don't know, companies like CrowdStrike, for example. Uh, we believe that it is important for us and for MSPs, who are our partners, and for the customers to, for us to be number one in those tests. Because security needs to be verified, and it needs to be verified by third party. And, and that's the only way to go. And you know, whenever we participate in competition, we definitely need to be in top three or number one. And not only it's important what we have now, we continuously invest not in cybersecurity, but in cyber protection. We file more patents per capita or per employee than any company in the industry, starting from the point when the new team came to run Acronis back in 2013. These are the five areas of our investment. So first of all is self-defense. We believe the most important thing is for you, service providers, and for our solution to be protected against the bad guys. We are somebody who need to, first of all, be protected, not harm our customers, but also we need to be protected by ourselves because we need to not harm our customers also with our employees and with our solutions. Then smart sensors. We believe in collecting information from hundreds of millions or potentially billions of different data sources to be able to analyze it and with our backup integration uniquely analyze it over a long period of time to uh, provide better protection. Then automated forensic. We believe without forensic, you cannot go on. You have to do forensic, you have to know what happened. And that does not relate just to security problems. It's also relating to safety problems, privacy problems, authenticity problems, accessibility problems. You need to know what happened. But because there are so many problems, there are 300,000 viruses every day, new viruses every day, there are so many mistakes in your workloads, in applications and systems, you have to do it automatically. We also believe that it's no longer good for something to be down for several hours. So disaster recovery needs to be part of every protection. It needs to be used for security. You need to not have more than several minutes downtime in case problem happen. It doesn't matter whether you're a small business. There is no reason to believe that small business cannot afford its IT to be always up. And finally, we invest heavily in autonomous protection. We really believe that protection has to work with and without us, with partners and without partners, with connectivity and without connectivity, and it needs to continuously enhance itself. Anything static will not work. And with that, I wanted to invite uh, to the stage our VP of Cyber Protection Research, uh, Kandit Wust, who is actually based in Schaffhausen and is originally for Schaffhausen. Prior to Acronis, he worked for 19 years for, for Semantic in a lead research positions and, and, and analyst positions. And so he will show a demo of Acronis CyberProtect. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Sergey. And also, hello from my side to everyone. So I'm really excited to show you the key features of the Acronis CyberProtect. 
And of course, as Sergey knows, I could talk for hours and hours, and I don't want to take away the time. So I definitely recommend that if you want to see more, go and talk to our experts, get a demo, have a look and feel of it, because there is a lot more that you can explore. Also, if you're watching this as a stream at home, I recommend go to full screen so you can best enjoy the demo. And with that, let's switch over to the console of Acronis CyberProtect. So first, let's talk about what you see if you log in. You get the nice overview where you have all your workloads, your different devices. You can see the lost alerts. Maybe there was a missing patch. Maybe there was some ransomware detected. Everything that you need to know to get an overview. And of course, you can customize it with your own widgets so that the information which is most important for you is visible. If you go to the devices, you can see the CyberFit score, which is kind of like a risk score, giving you the most kind of endangered devices inside your network. And we also give you a recommendation how to increase it by installing encryption, by having a backup, and so on. But let's go to the CyberProtect plan, which is kind of the heart. Here you find the backup, so full, full disk or just some folders. You have continuous data protection, which means whenever an application like an Office application creates some new device or some new uh, document, it will automatically be added to the backup. Also, of course, you can schedule if it's encrypted and so on, and you can add additional features like the forensic backup that Sergey was mentioning. So we will take a memory dump at the time of the backup and store it with that data. If we go to the security side, yes, we do have our active protection, which is threat agnostic. So we don't care if it's wasted block or a clop, we will block it, and we also have the self-defense to block our own application and all the backups from being deleted or manipulated. We also have the behavior-based detection, going after what's happening, and exploit protection against any zero-day exploit. So if there is no patch available, we can still protect the application. Furthermore, we have URL filtering, so we can block malicious URLs if you go somewhere and kind of phishing website or command and control servers. But even in addition to that, we can also do category filtering. So maybe you want to block gambling. Might make sense, right? So you just enable it, and from now on, it is protected or blocked. We also do vulnerability assessment and then patch management. Not just for Microsoft applications, but also for third-party applications. And of course, you want to make sure that you're always protected. So this is all inside one console, in one plane. You don't have to move to different consoles, 10 different consoles, making it very complicated. You have everything here. So if you go back, and I already did a vulnerability assessment on my devices, you can see a few missing patches. So I could now go and say, I approve it for all of my applications, or I just deploy it on one server, just to check if it's actually working, and if not, I can restore the backup, which is automatically created before the rollout of the patch. If we go back to the overview, we also have a threat feed with smart alerts. So the Cyber Protection Operations Center has analysts 24 hours searching the internet for new threats, uh, natural catastrophes, and then giving you a recommendation what to do. Maybe do a backup, maybe do a scan. And here we actually see one of my machines had some alert, right? So maybe we want to investigate further and see what did actually happen here? So let's click on it. It comes up with the activity that we had, like was it scanned, when was the last backup, and so on. But let's have a real look at the machine. So we can actually use our secure remote connection to connect to that machine. It's not exposing any RDP servers to the internet and all the bad guys, but it's using our secure connection through the agent. And now I have secure access to my remote machine. I can interact with it. I can check. Is the active protection still running? Is the agent still running? Uh, here I see that, yes, it is still running, and it's also protecting the WebEx, right? In addition, well, you could interact, right? And what would happen if we accidentally open one of those attachments? It only takes one employee, right, to open one of those. And as you can see by the green thing, a lot of things are happening in the background because this is actually wasted locker. It's now trying to delete my backups, it's trying to shut down my security product and encrypting the files. But as you can see, the files are still here. So was I just lucky? Of course not, because in the background we see that Acronis CyberProtect has blocked it just by the behavior of it and restored any file that was already tampered. So you as a user, you don't need to interact anything, restore anything. 
it all happens automatically without any data loss. And even if it wouldn't work, well, you still got the backups, right? So you can go back to the backups, and we also scan the backups for malware. So before you restore anything, we actually remove the malware, so always if you restore, you have an up-to-date and secure new machine to work with. Or you can spin it up as a virtual machine. So it's very simple to stay protected on all of the level. It's more than just backup, it's more than just security, it's a cyber protection integrated solution. Well, let's say maybe we want to investigate further, right? So maybe the root cause analysis should be done because the, well, we want to know how they get in, right? So we can do the forensic analysis. We can go back to the backups and instead of restoring, we now take the forensic data that we acquired with the backup. And this is something that your typical EDR, MDR solution will not offer. We have the memory dump, we have the running processes all at your fingertips. So this is historical data that you can go through all the different backups, finding out what actually happened and what was on that machine. So if you open up, for example, all the running processes at the time, well, there are quite a lot, of course, but just by looking at it, I see, at least for me, one which is suspicious. It's an SVC host with a zero instead of an O. So that is definitely strange. So let's have a look with one of those open source memory forensic tools like um, recall or volatility. We can load it up, we can do a scan for what was the active network connections at the time, and you can see there are two outbound connectivities to some IP addresses which I don't recognize, so maybe we should investigate further. Again, we can do the process listing, finding out, yes, the SVC host with the zero, still there, so it's definitely something, but what was it? Well, since we have the whole data, we can actually dump the binary from memory, recreate the EXE, the binary, and then do some tests on it. For example, on VirusTotal, which is a free online scanner with multiple scanners, giving us an idea, well, what was it? And we see Acronis, of course, detected it. No surprise. But the surprise is, why wasn't it detected on the machine? Well, since I have the backup, I can go back to the configuration of it and check the configuration and Yes, unfortunately, I see someone created an exclusion for the whole C drive. So all the alerts were ignored. Was it an insider or just a bad sysadmin? Definitely something I should check out. But if it's a critical system, well, I want to make sure that it's always up and running. So let's look at disaster recovery. If you're an MSP, you want to make sure that your customers, they don't have any downtime at all, right? So if we go down into, let's say, one of your tenants, one of your customers, we can check, again, the protection plan, where all the protection for security, vulnerability assessment, and also backup is happening. It's the same place where we also configured the disaster recovery. So at this place, we can check, yes, we are doing a full backup of the machine, which is required for the disaster recovery, and then we can say, yes, we want to do automated disaster recovery which means we will automatically create a virtual machine in the background. You don't need to configure anything like CPUs or network card and stuff. That's all done in the background automatically for you. So if we would now actually do a failover, we can go back and say, yes, we don't want to test it. We're proud, right? We're going to do production live failover. And just like this, we already started spinning up a new virtual machine in the background with the last backup. And within seconds, and not 10 days, right, we're back up and running. And you can actually verify it by connecting with the remote agent to it, and we see the machine is already starting up, and we can actually log in. We can also have a look and see that our local environment was expanded through a secure VPN to the cloud, where those two machines are up and running. So you don't have any downtime. And if needed, yes, you could even download the virtual VPN appliance locally, or have a point-to-site VPN downloaded maybe for your sysadmin to uh, start working and updating something. So in two minutes, you're already up again, no downtime, so no cost that you need because it's all automated in the background. Very important to stay online and to stay healthy. And with that, back to you, Sergey. Thank you, Kandit. And the most important point of all of this, this only works if it's super easy. And the other most important point, it is not for large enterprise. It is not for expensive server or large virtual machine. It's for every virtual machine, for every server, for every company, for every home that 
is what is required for us to continue with cyber wall. With that, I wanted to quickly cover several other areas. So one of them is a chronic cyber cloud. And, you know, I just want to point out that out of all people in this industry, I am one of the people and my team is one of the teams who are working with service providers for a long time. Exactly 10 years ago, I had a first large parallel summit in this wonderful Fountain Blue Miami Beach Hotel where we were supposed to be right now, actually, you, you know, imagine that. Uh, tomorrow is the birthday of my daughter, which was supposed to be in Switzerland. I was ready to go to Miami and not be present at the birthday, but because of COVID, I can be together with her and not there. And so back then in 2010, we had a summit where we talked about profit from the cloud. And with this company, Parallels, we built a number of things which are used by every hosting company in the world. Parallels basically build a complete set of tools for service providers sold to almost every hoster and every telco. Odin is something which enables perhaps $5 billion of cloud revenues. We sold it to Ingram, which is the core part of Cloud Blue. Many of the people connect to it. Many of the people use it as a third-party service or third-party product. Virtuosa, perhaps less known, but it's um, part of every Linux server. It is the code which is underlying Linux containers, the containers which is used by everybody for Kubernetes. That's a code which is created by us, patented by me and my partners. And today it runs perhaps a small number of 5 million virtual machines and Plesk, cPanel, and WHMCS. Any of you use Plesk, cPanel, and WHMCS here? No people using cPanel or Plesk, huh? No service, no hosters, but uh, almost every hoster in the world, 100% and 50% of all websites, and besides that, Gelastic Cloudflare, Equit, Cloud Linux were all built partially by the team, which is behind uh, um, Acronis. Just want to remind you of this part of the service provider market, web hosters evolution. Started in 95, probably about the same time many of you started MSP businesses. And it started from shared hosting. It's evolved to higher end, dedicated VPS hosting by approximately 2,000. And, and, you know, it's still selling a lot of dedicated VPS. And it went to email and application hosting in, in five years. You know, Open Exchange, WordPress, uh, Microsoft Hosted Exchange were applications which were widely sold. Then by 2010, that's a profit from the cloud summit. That's actually, um, you would be surprised, is the first time uh, Parallels officially endorsed cloud um, is uh, when the companies switched to um, to the cloud uh, hosting, you know, one of the famous players, Software, is actually a core of IBM cloud offering. It's a company which was bought by uh, cloud. What is important for our service provider partners, which is our main audience today, to remember is that really the main source of um, income for founders for mergers, acquisitions, and IPOs. So some lucky ones went public, vast majority of those who made money in this business who are today my partners and my, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, my, my partners in business and investors are actually made money through acquisitions. And so many of you should think about the future of your business in that respect. So what happens in five and 10 years? At some point you will get older. At some point you will get an opportunity. How would you be able to sell the business? And so with that, we noticed several things which made service providers successful, and we bring those things, complete automation is a sort of underlying word for it, to make hosters, uh, make expertise which is coming from hosters to be applied to MSPs. And we see the future of a chronic cyber cloud as really these five things. So first of all, delegation, super important. We don't want to build the business which is designed for certain business model. We support OEMs, we support white label, distributors will support cloud aggregators, we support service providers, and service providers can have service providers who then sell customers. Delegation is super important. At some point back in a, around the beginning of a service provider era, in the late 90s, IBM have published an article where they said, without delegation, you cannot build service bureaus. Mass management, another thing which is super important. Nobody in the hosting industry were able to succeed because without mass management. In hosting industry, you're talking about very large number of customers. Typical hosters deal with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of customers. In the MSP industry, you will deal with very large number of workloads. 
Believe it or not, every user will have around 100 workloads. So even a company with just 10 users may end up having 1,000 workloads. And so if you have just you know, 100 customers, that could be 100,000 workloads. Without mass management, and each workload actually has multiple applications. Without mass management, you cannot survive. And that's something which we will provide heavily and invest heavily in CyberCloud, already doing it today. Automation, super important. This is an automated surgery um, uh, by, by Da Vinci surgery place. Um, the point of it, without automation, you cannot achieve efficiency. Efficiency is super important, and so you need to automate all of your business processes. You have to be able to do more with less people. Cost management. One of the things you do for customer, you manage their costs. Today, service provider industry is growing, MSP industry is growing at 20 to 30 percent, and really there is not as much pressure on competing on costs. Much more competition is on quality. However, you have to remember that cost management is not just about giving your customer a best price. It is also about spending more money on marketing and getting more customers, and only at scale you will be able to sustain your customers. And if you don't want to grow, it is also about providing better service. So managing your costs is super important, and you have to do it with a single system. And finally, integration. That's the only way to achieve those benefits. So with that, I switch to the second part of, um, of uh, things which support success of CyberProtect, which is Acronis Cyber Platform. And so we believe that the only way to be successful is to provide an integrated, sophisticated but fully integrated offer. And so why integration? First of all, if you don't have integration, you cannot achieve security. Security most of the time relies on humans who configure things incorrectly or misconfigure things on purpose. Then you have to be very efficient. So without integration, you have to manage multiple tools, multiple situations with multiple vendors coming at a different times. And so you cannot really manage a lot of workloads or a lot of data per your technician. Then avoiding human errors. Human errors is still the main reason why things fail. Human error is the main reason why planes fall off the sky and why traffic accidents happen. And only with integration you can minimize human errors. Reliability is something which everybody strives here. Reliability is something which gets you to have a headache of your service provider because that is when you get an angry customer call. Reliability can cost you lost customer. Reliability in a service provider business can also cost you lost money because the customers of service providers can actually sue them and get the money back. And finally, scalability, very important if you want to scale and become as valuable as GoDaddy or as SoftLayer, which are all made their uh, founders billionaires. And again, when I met those guys in the early 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, not many of them even thought they could be uh, multi-millionaires, but they ended up being billionaires because they were able to scale their businesses. And with that, we are not approaching it in a simple way. In many companies in the space have went through providing an integrated products, well, integrated offerings by buying a lot of companies, but keeping the products disintegrated. We built a chronic cyber platform, and a chronic cyber platform based on a very special, very unique integration technology called a chronic cyber bus, which includes a chronic cyber mesh, a chronic cyber sync, cyber workflows, set of APIs, and many implementation examples enabling us, enabling service providers, cloud distributors, cloud aggregators, and ISVs to actually integrate in such a way that for the user of the product, the MSP technician or the customer, it looks like a single product. And so why Cyber Platform? First of all, it includes integration technology, which is very, very unique. It is the product which is built on integration technology. It is also something which we built into business platform, not just a platform for integration. We intend to help our integration partners to build their businesses, to grow their revenues through the third-party extensions, and so on and so forth. In addition to that, with Acronis Cyber Platform, we specifically focus on top MSP, managed service provider software vendors, cloud service automation vendors like CloudBlue and AppDirect, um, RMM vendors like the people here, ConnectWise, Atera, Ninja, SolarWinds, Casia, professional service automation vendors. We intend to provide top 15 of the MSP software vendors integrated, either by them or by us, and top five for every geography, very important that we only have 40% of our revenue coming from North America. 
So for us, having an integrated offering in Italy or Spain or Switzerland or Liechtenstein or Austria or Poland or Czech Republic is equally important and many of these top vendors from the MSP software are different between different markets. Then finally, we believe that our platform needs to be as easy as our product to be usable by service providers. Our main extension, integration and customization partner is service provider which can leverage the rich ecosystem on top of the, uh, uh, our Acrony Cyber platform to extend their offering, to make the churn less, to improve the efficiencies and so on and so forth. And one other thing which is very important, we have announced already two acquisitions this year. We actually intend, intended to announce several more on Summit. They are actually processed, but we couldn't announce them for technical reasons. We will probably acquire a couple dozen companies over the next five years and probably a dozen just in the next 12 months. Now, the important thing, we will never sell those products separately from CyberProtect. It will always be part of this CyberProtect console for a customer and for a service provider and for a distributor. It will always be single agent, single policy, single UI. So this platform is a platform which would allow us to integrate the acquisitions. And that's why, for example, some of the um, media members ask me what happened with 5.9 and device lock. Well, we're integrating them. It takes a little bit of time. It's not years like for some of our competitors or never. It is probably months, but it needs to be transparently integrated to be available to you. And with that, I want uh, Kandit to invite you again to show a demo of Acronis Cyber Platform. Thank you, Sergey. So yes, um, Cyber Platform is definitely important. As Sergey said, you need to automate, you need to integrate to be efficient. Because we all know we don't have enough resources. We have better things to do with the time than configuring in 20 different um, avenues, right? So let's switch over to the Cyber Platform website and get started from there. So here, if you become a partner with the Acronis Cyber Platform, you will also get access to the developer network, which means you have access to all the documentation, to sample code, of course, to the blogs and the um, support forums and the knowledge base. So you get all the information that you need to actually create your own integration, which means you have the documentation on the different APIs with the details on how to do tasks, how to do maybe file share and sync. And you have also access to the GitHub repository with some example code, for example, here, the WHMCS provisioning application that we created. So you can have a look, maybe modify it to your own needs and so on. But don't worry, as Sergey said, you don't need to create everything on your own because we already have the solution portal with the WHMCS, but also a lot of other applications already fully integrated. So you can simply pick the ones that you use for your workloads, for your RMM, PSA, whatever you need to automate, and you probably should automate a lot of it. For this demo here, I'm going to focus on the ConnectWise control and ConnectWise manage just to give you an integrating approach and show how easy it is to roll out new uh, machines and also do the billing. As a service provider, if you onboard a new customer, you probably will go to the console and then add it with a new name right, for the new customer, define if it's self-service or if you will be managing it for it. You define the login name and the email address so you can send in the default password that they have to change afterwards. All those normal steps that you would probably expect. And if you go one further, of course, you can select which editions, which services you're going to offer. And of course, you should go for the Cyber Protect edition, not just the backup. And you can also define, is it for virtual systems? Where will the backups being hosted on our cloud or some other clouds and so on? So you'll define all those services and attributes, and then you go further. But we can save you all the time if you already use Connect Vice Manage. All you need to do for the integration is go to the module for the connect device, integrate with the API, which means you need the public key and the private key, which is generated by the application, click on it, and now you already have access to all the applications, all the customer data that you have generated in ConnectWise here inside the Acronis console. So if you switch back, you see the same customers that you have created in ConnectWise listed here. Next thing you would do is do a mapping of the Acronis products to the ConnectWise. So for that, you can go back and you have exactly the same 
uh, services that we just looked at, right? So here, those four main services, they're already pre-populated inside the module. So you can just click through, see if you need all of those, and then you either apply it with the default names, or you can change it to new names if it's the first time for you to integrate. Well, let's say we're going to use the normal mapping here for the products and would go one step further. So now everything is already mapped. All we have to do is let's go to one customer. Let's pick a uh, demo customer here for the summit. And we need to add a management agreement for it, as in the managed services. So we would go and open up and just add it. That's all you need to do. Of course, you need to fill out the information about when was it started, uh, billing address and everything that you would do normally as well. But you can simply now select all the products that we defined automatically. So you don't have to do a lot of it manually. It can be automated as good as possible. So now we have everything set up. And well, probably we want to map everything with that new custom, right? So let's go to the Acronis side, because it's integrated in both directions, right? We search for our demo customer. And we apply the mapping in the background. And it will now populate everything that we have defined uh, through the module, and it will be good to go. And while it's doing this, let's see how we could roll out the new agent to a new machine. We use ConnectWise Control, and if it's a new customer, again, we could set it up with customer name, login name, email address. We can even define the password directly here, just like we saw before, right? It's because it's managed through ConnectWise, we can use the ConnectWise Control to roll out new clients and also create new clients if we need to do so for the onboarding. And again, on the lower part, you see the same four options for which edition to use, which cloud to use for the backup storage, as we've seen here in the console before. But it's the same information, just mapped into the ConnectVice side. But of course, we already created the mapping, right? Uh, you saw me clicking there for the test account. So here, we're not going to create a new customer account. We're actually going to map it to an existing one. So let's start over again and say, hey, we already have a customer which we onboarded through ConnectWise Manage. We're going to select that one, deploy it. And now this client is already rolled out. And we can see back in the console, if you go to that specific customer, that there will be already a new machine with the new agent rolled out. As simple as that. And we can use the control also to apply some protection plan. Maybe I want to make sure that they have a backup for the full machine running, maybe even now, right, with the default settings. So we can deploy the plan and run the backup. And while we do that in ConnectWise, we can switch back to the console and actually verify it's already starting to populate the backup, which also means it's populating the attributes back to the ConnectWise Manage where you will see that it's using some kind of storage, a few agents, and that will be going into your billing system and the ticketing system and so on. So it's that simple to integrate everything and to make it as efficient for you to actually work with Acronis, because that's the only way to go forward. And with that, back to you, Sergey. Thank you, Candid. So one thing which I want to point out, we, our best and most beloved um, integration partner is ConnectWise is our largest um, ISV partner, um, and, and they provide both um, uh, MSP uh, software such as PSA, professional service automation, and remote uh, management and monitoring, and many other tools for MSPs. But we are committed to integrate with all uh, top vendors, and we are doing it. And that's just a matter of weeks or months before we release seemingly good integrations. Integrations are always just integrations. We're going to continue to make them better and better. We believe ours are by far the best in comparison to anybody. We can always get more feedback and make them better. So the, there is a couple more points. So one of them is a chronic cyber infrastructure. So what is it really? I just want to explain. So first of all, if you look at my experience with service provider business, it really comes from Virtuoso. Virtuoso is, uh, um, uh, is virtual machine virtualization software. We invented containers and net network virtualization, then uh, also storage virtualization. It's a complete platform. It's a small multi-10 million dollar company, which we still own and, and uh, run separately. Now, Virtuoso 
expertise, virtuoso team, and some of its technology is a core for a current cyber infrastructure. What is it? It's really uh, storage. Our storage, we believe, is very, very good, very sophisticated. It is block object. Uh, it is snapshot hot storage. It, it also has file storage. We also make it available as protection storage for third parties. But our core business is to use it for, as a protection storage for ourselves. It is compute. We do not believe in the future for many reasons you can have storage without compute. Having storage remotely from compute is very expensive. And so there is lots of vendors in the space which are pure storage vendors or pure storage service vendors. We don't believe it's sustainable. In order for you to achieve the best cost and the best service level, you have to have compute just next to storage on the same machine because compute is needed to manage the uh, uh, protection infrastructure. It is re required to analyze it in order to be able to find malware, to do data management, and it is absolutely mandatory to be able to do disaster recovery, which we believe is absolutely necessary for every virtual machine and every server. It's also networking. In the future, we see that many of our customers and partners will keep multiple copies across multiple locations, and so we need to have replicated global network to optimize not only the storage and compute, but also to optimize upload and download speed and distribution of petabytes of data. We just started in this business, and we already have more than 500 petabytes in our cloud storage, and it's growing over 100% per year. And you know, you have to think about 500 petabytes. We have to upload it, download it. In many cases, you have to multiply it. Then it is also the reason why we can afford to build global network or acronis data centers. Our goal is to have more than 100 data centers before the end of 12 months. So by next summit, that's our goal. We will have close to 40 by the end of the year. And in order to be able to do it in such a way that it's profitable, we have to have our own storage. And we provide our storage not only as a service, but also in the form of software appliance and hardware appliance to partners and customers. Then, you know, the benefits of such approach, so first of all, we can control security. Super important if you have protection infrastructure, you don't want protection infrastructure to not work in case of security. That's your last line of attack. And so it has to work at all times, and it's really very special how you build infrastructure for protection. Yes, you can use public clouds, but they are not built for protection. So in, in fact, they will fail you at the wrong moment. Then reliability, super important to have the right level of reliability. There's many ways to manage availability and reliability. Protection infrastructure is something which is difficult to test. You know, failures don't happen that often for you to test it at all times. So it has to be very reliable without too much continuous testing. Scalability, we're talking about millions of workloads today. We believe we're talking about hundreds of millions of workloads in the near future, which needs to work on the storage, potentially many billions of workloads. Very low cost of ownership. Very low cost of ownership is super important with the right service level for us to be sustainable, for us to be competitive and sustainable in this business, and for you as well. And so we will continue to make our storage cost carefully lower and making sure that we can keep it extremely profitable for us and you in such ways that we can provide extremely good cost to the customer. It's already better today to keep your data in the cloud in terms of cost and keeping it on premise. It is important, of course, to do it for protection storage, and it's rather easy. But what if you're talking about disaster recovery? That's a completely different thing. What if you're talking about usage of AI and ML? That's another completely different thing. And of course, it has to be extremely easy to use. Unless it's easy to use, you can't use it. And the fact is that any protection without storage can't work. In the past, a company like Acronis used to sell backup. But the reality is that backup is not going to actually do backup. You have to have a person, and you have to have a hardware in order for backup to work. And in fact, you also have to have a data center, and you have to manage all of that with that person. And so really, backup was really a very small portion of the solution, just even you talk about data protection. And so that's our global local initiative. Why? Because we want to provide, um, you know, this is just a reference, 195 countries, 48 separate territories, over 100,000 habitat line uh, islands. Every country wants to have protection infrastructure in the country. I just spoke to our partner from Liechtenstein, which is here. Where is our partner from Liechtenstein? And he wants to have it in Liechtenstein. Would you imagine? Liechtenstein is one hour from here. And they actually don't have their own currency. They use Swiss francs. But they want to have the data centers in Liechtenstein. And Czech Republic wants to have data centers in Czech Republic and Slovakia in Slovakia. I'm not even talking about countries like 
Qatar or Saudi Arabia or any country in Africa. Protection infrastructure needs to be next to you in your country, in many cases in your region, in many cases in your city for you to feel good. And so with that, we are committed to build very large number of data centers. Our goal is to have 300 data centers by us, 3,000 data centers and data destination by our partners. Crazy numbers. Nobody else has such infrastructure today. To provide geo-redundancy as well, to keep control with partners so that the partner chooses whether he sends the data to himself, to somebody else, or to multiple places. To support local disaster recovery, especially for disaster recovery, it has to be next to your user and next to your workload, and to keep very, very competitive pricing. Pricing highly depends on the territory. Costs for internet, costs for data center space, costs for different services are very different between different territories. And what is acceptable for here may not be acceptable in a country in, in I don't know, let's say Middle East, even though it may be very close from the pink standpoint. So that's cyber infrastructure. Cyber infrastructure is something which is extremely complex to replicate. No vendor in the space has protection infrastructure which is specifically designed for protection. It took me and my team 20 years building virtualization technologies, network storage, and, <coughs> and compute to be able to build it. And in this case, we build it for special purpose, for protection. Nobody else has it. Everybody else uses some kind of general purpose third party. General third party does not provide you the right service level. Then, of course, I wanted to talk about the last point, which is, I think, um, perhaps less down to, more down to earth, less, less exciting, but it's just uh, addressing present partner requests. So kind of housekeeping. So our partners want roadmap transparency. We're committed, hopefully, before the end of this year to provide full transparency to partners about when do we resolve your issues. You will be able to see it in your partner portal. You will be able to track it, whether it's a defect, whether it's a support call, whether it's a feature request. And, and we will attend to it. You will be able to call for other partners to vouch for your features. If we see a lot of partners requesting certain feature, we will be able to uh, promote it in our roadmap. We're committed to monthly releases. We're committed to provide updates to you. Of course, everything's very dynamic. In the cloud is no longer kind of like I go this direction for, for 12 months. It's more or less you change direction every day a little bit. So it's very, very dynamic, very frustrating for, for my engineers to plan. Then we realize that we need to provide much more attention to our top partners and to all partners, and we're growing sort of our attention level in the average by the factor of three. So partner account managers will get on the average three times less partners to attend to. And um, uh, especially for top partners, we are providing dedicated partner account managers to help you to grow your business, not just to do better support. We also grow in our support levels. Um, we um, believe that the right Support level eventually is a um, uh, very, very quick response time, um, you know, less than 15 minutes uh, for top partners, less than one hour for everybody, really less than half an hour. And we are launching premium services. So premium services is something which you can buy, and, and these services are in these areas which are required for partners to be successful. This is very, very involved and engaged relationship between us and service providers. And so it required premium support. We, uh, by default, have four hours response time. We now launch one hour response time and 15 minutes response time. Then we also have premium education. We have increased our investment in Acronis Cyber Academy by the factor of five. We want to train 30 times more people per year that have trained before. We believe our best way to keep our customers and partners protected and to have them properly educated can only be done with special systems and special content. Marketing services, very important to help our partners to get more customers. And that is something we're starting to do now, not just with distributors to get more service providers, which is super important, but also with our MSPs, especially with MSPs which are interested to grow their businesses fast. So come to your partner account managers and ask for it. Uh, sales services, we see that one of the most uh, well-working and well-operating uh, uh, services right now is inside sales of some sort. Is ha having people from remote location to be able to assist your sales process. That includes both service providers and distributors and development service. All of the services are available for you at certain price. But most importantly, if you are having enough business with Acronis, they are going to be available for you for free as a part of your commitment contract or contract with Acronis. With that, uh, the last thing which are very important for us and partners, we launched this year Acronis Cyber Feed Partner Initiative. 
So we started many years ago with CyberFit Sports. You know, frankly speaking, when I um, came up with the idea together with my team to build cyber protection, it was 2014, and I was hoping to be here telling you all the same things by 2017. You know, we started doing sports in 2014 and 2015 to prepare what I'm doing now. So for many, many years we're doing sport. Now it will start making sense. We are providing our software and our services to top clubs in the, year, in the world, several teams in Formula One, several teams in almost every type of sport, several teams soon in Switzerland, several teams in Germany, uh, top teams like Liverpool, like Manchester City, like Arsenal, like Roma, like Inter Milan, like Ajax, uh, close to 100 teams overall. Now with that, we will popularize the world cyber fit and we launched something which we call CyberFit Score for workloads, and that is going to be available, it is already available for free from our website, that's something which you can download, install, and see the, how protected is your workload. You know, the good protection is 800 plus, and, and you know, in most, vast majority of cases, you won't get the score, and it will be very clear to understand why it is, why it is important, and we, over time, will provide information how workloads similar to yours had problems because they didn't increase their CyberFit score. But more importantly, we launched CyberFit score for partners, which enables a level of engagement with partners across these five vectors, support, education, marketing, sales, and development. This is not really our rating of partners, it's rather our rating of engagement on our side. So it's much more our problem if the score is low. The score is from zero to 33. Our average score today for uh, distributors is just 11, and for MSPs is just 12. We do have some partners which score 29 in terms of distributors and uh, 27 for service providers, and we can see that the people with high score correlate with very high margins in distributors and extremely fast growth. So our number two distributor in the world is growing at over 250% per year, year on year. And, and they have a score close to 29. And our top service provider is growing over 150%, and he has a score close to 27. Then uh, how to get the score up? There is really two ways. So one way is to do more business with us, of course, and you can do it by uh, signing cloud provider license agreement, which is a special agreement, which is a commitment agreement, which allows us to invest into partnership with you and you to invest into partnership with us. Again, this is not a reseller business as it was in the past. The engagement requires integration on all this level, and the more integrated you are, the more margins you get and the more growth you get. And it's a huge space. It's growing very rapidly. Lots of money to make. The other way, of course, to buy, um, to buy um, premium services or just to get your service up by going and educating your people. The CyberFit level, you can find it out from your partner account manager will directly correlate to your growth. You, we will provide more information about it. Today, we just started it about six months ago. We have only 1.5 thousand partners which are fully rated out of 8,000. So there is not enough statistics, but even with the current statistic, we know that there is a direct correlation to growth. So with that, I just want to do a little recap. This is Singapore, this is my country. I moved to Singapore about 27 years ago, believe it or not, it's crazy. Uh, much more than half of my life and, you know, definitely 27 years out of 28 years in business I spent in Singapore. And in Singapore we had a very interesting thing. So first of all, I looked it up just before coming up stage. So over the past five days we had on the average less than one case per day in the community. We have 5.6 million people, less than one case in the community. Everybody's doing everything, everybody's going everywhere. Nobody's scared of anybody, nobody's wearing masks if, you know, if, if they want to because it's, there is really no cases. Now, another thing which is even more interesting is that there was 58,000 cases, almost as many as in Switzerland, but 28 deaths. Okay, Switzerland is a very developed country and it was much more developed than Singapore just about 30 years ago. And in Switzerland we have um, probably, what, 2.8 thousand uh, people dead or 2.5 thousand out of about 74,000 cases. So that ratio of deaths is about 50 to 100 times higher. What did Singapore do to have zero cases? We have 3,000 cases here in Switzerland. 3,000 versus zero. A big difference, you know, almost the same population. And 28 people there. Well, very simple thing. They did prevention. So we prepared 
from the SARS time, and we had these basic prevention measures. Detection, very rapidly we had tests and they were administered to the right people in the right way when the tests were not available enough and then they were available to everybody. Response, correct isolation. Everybody in Singapore gets isolated if they're sick and they're either isolated in a hospital or in a community facility. So if you are not very sick, you go to community facility. You cannot really go around. If you're quarantined in your home, if you leave home, first time you get a fine, second time you get a large fine and potentially a little bit of a community service, third time you go to jail. And so Singapore is not really a nice country like Switzerland, but you know, it really worked. Then recovery, we manage recovery really well. Both number of ICU beds, we actually increased number of ICU beds uh, by, by the factor of 10. It never was needed. We have now zero people in ICU, but we could have dealt with, with the problems. At that time when we started, if you remember, everybody talked about ventilation. And forensic, amazing job by Singapore police, which really investigated every case for everybody who was sick, investigated everywhere they went. It sounds crazy, but it's not really that difficult. As a result of it, we did not isolate people which didn't need to be isolated, but we isolated all the people which needed to be isolated. And the difference is amazing, right? I mean, think about what is happening now. And, you know, that is really about complexity, cost, security, privacy, and the fact that being healthy is, of course, basic human need. Safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security, and very important, all these five things doing all these five things in order to enable the benefits of um, the protection. If you do that, you can be protected. If you don't do that, as simple as that, you are not protected. And because of that, we do this cyber protect, cyber cloud, cyber platform, cyber infrastructure, and cyber services. Reality is that cyber services, cyber infrastructure, cyber platform, cyber cloud, all of it is only done to make cyber protect be as easy, as reliable, as secure, as cost efficient, and yet keep full control with partner and customer. Because if you don't keep full control with them, they won't do it. But really, most amazing thing is really singularity and I'm very, very happy that this year, in addition to us doing our singularity and us launching the best product in our IT career and our business career, which is Acronis Cyber Protect, there was a Nobel Prize, which is just given to this guy, Roger Penrose, you know, uh, for the discovery that black hole formation is a robust prediction of general uh, theory of uh, relativity. So really uh, for singularity, ultimate singularity is um, actually black hole. Uh, you should read this wonderful book, Emperor New Mind, because Roger Penner is much more famous for saying that the brain is out of this universe. So I think by giving him Nobel Prize, they sort of uh, confirm that human brain is not a, a, hot, a hot, wet Turing machine. But with uh, Acronis Cyber Protect, we launched this super amazing product, which is one agent. All of these services come from one agent with minimal overhead on your system and on your IT people. With one policy, you only configure one policy. Why to go to multiple tools and look at multiple interfaces and get multiple certification? With one user interface, so you need to only loan one user interface. It behaves the same way across all layers of protection, across all vectors of protection. One license, and with today, we're announcing new pricing where we're going to have only cyber protect. And CyberProtect standard effectively comes free if you use per gigabyte pricing if you don't have any gigabytes. And it includes all required protection across all vend vectors of security. Now, of course, if you start backing up, you will be charged per gigabytes. And if you will use advanced packs, and we're going to have five advanced packs, advanced management, advanced security, advanced backup, advanced disaster recovery, and advanced data leak prevention. If you use them, you will pay per workload additional price. And you can also pay per workload if you don't want to use our storage. But it's really very simple model. One product, Cyber Protect, and it will include disaster recovery and will include basic, well, it will include standard disaster recovery and standard data leak prevention in a core product. And from one vendor, so you can only work with us in terms of support, in terms of partner success, in terms of sales and marketing, and in terms of development. It's real, real easy. And it's a huge market. We believe it's half a trillion dollar market just for cyber protection, services, and software combined. And, and so with that, I just want to 
tell you what you can do next. It's just really five simple things to do next. Um, so really, it is those things. You can deploy cyber protection. It's be, it's amazing for me. I feel so well that I can say this because this is super applicable to anyone. All of you have IT devices. So amazing. Nobody in the world don't have any IT devices. Almost nobody. And you should deploy it whether you are an end user, a customer, whether you're a family, whether you're a service provider, whether you're a classic reseller, whether you want to use our prosumer product, you can deploy it. Market and sell advanced packs if you're a service provider because they provide advanced level of protection and they're not expensive and they will get you to make more money and have happier customers. Grow your CyberFit score if you're our partner. If you're a classic partner, the best way to grow our cyber score to become our cloud partner, leverage Acronis Cyber Platform to extend it and support Acronis Foundation. We're going to have a, a fundraising event this evening here and, and the, the mid midday in um, Eastern Standard Time uh, on Acronis Foundation. We're committed as Acronis not only to build great products and great services, but also to do good things. It is really our strategy to uh, do well, to do good, and to have fun. And there's nothing more fun than to do well and to go do good. And part of doing good is building schools. And so I invite you all to join this event. I will actually uh, be uh, um, conducting this event and, and my speech from here on stage. And you can contribute building schools. It is not so expensive to build schools. Everybody deserves access to knowledge. And it is a lot of fun. And it's a good business. Thank you.